But on a Friday night where we celebrate athletic achievement, well, we have to begin with one athlete's failure. Our headline tonight, Ohio State tomorrow at the Horseshoe. Tomorrow day is senior day, but one key senior will not be suiting up for a crucial game with the Fighting Illini. The title, Belisari Busted. Actually, Steve Belisari won't even be allowed into Ohio Stadium. The senior quarterback suspended indefinitely from the team after being arrested early this morning for driving under the influence. Now, Belisari, a three-year starter and co-captain, pulled over at 2.20 Friday morning after squealing his tires in Columbus. Belisari, who was driving alone, had trouble touching his nose with his index finger, staggered when asked to balance himself, and had trouble reciting the alphabet for an arresting officer. Now, once taken to the police station, Belisari blew a .25 on, I'm sorry, .22 on the breathalyzer. That's more than twice the legal limit. I think Steve is very upset. I have not personally spoken with him. Uh, Coach Tressel has talked with him, and I know he's uh, very remorseful and upset with uh, with what happened. Um, obviously, it's uh, it's an event of uh, some magnitude given the game that's um, scheduled to be played tomorrow and and his uh, position and and leadership role on the team. Head coach Jim Tressel was not at the press conference today. He's trying to keep his focus on the Illini, but the coach did release a statement. And here it is. It also mentioned that Belisari is distressed by how his actions will affect the team and added, for the past 10 months, we've discussed the importance of decision-making and good quarterback play. The same can be true in life. This can be a good life lesson. Well, Steve Belisari had only recently started turning the booze into cheers at the horseshoe. Well, now it looks as if he's played his last game in Columbus. Andy Baskin and our Buckeyes insider, Jim Carsados, a former Buckeye quarterback himself, discussed today's incredible events. They are at the scene. Well, the roller coaster first year season for Jim Trestle continues to go up and down. Our Buckeye insider, Jim Carsados, and Jimmy, Steve Belisari started the last 31 games, but now he is suspended, and Ohio State has to find another answer against Illinois. It couldn't come in a worse time for the Buckeye. Steve Belisari was really starting to get in a role. He was executing well, he was playing well, and Scott McMullen has not had a lot of reps for the Buckeyes. This offense was starting to get in tune, and they've got two big games, not only the bowl bid, but obviously the Big Ten championship. The, the Buckeyes are in trouble right now, and I think they've got to come together as a team, and a lot of the other players have got to pick up where Steve left off. Scott McMullen, he's only uh, completed eight passes, I think, in his entire career here at Ohio State. Talk about going out green. I mean, is he on, he's obviously going to be on a short lease with Krenzel and maybe even McFadden ready to go tomorrow. Well, he's got to have everybody loosened up and ready to go. He doesn't know what to expect from Scott McMullen in this pressure situation. You've got Illinois. They're going to be all over him. They're going to rush. They're going to blitz. They're going to try to get after the quarterback. We've got to get back to the running game and be successful. That means three to four yards a punch, get it down the field, and the defense has got to turn the ball over, and they've got to make plays, get in the end zone. What is the difference between these quarterbacks? I mean, we haven't seen them since the spring game. Well, McMullen is much more of a pocket passer. He's a natural quarterback. He likes to stay in the pocket. He's big. He's strong. He's athletic. He's got a quick release, and he's pretty accurate. So I think what they have to do is they've got to get him into this game slowly. Start with the running game, short passes, give him something that will build his confidence, and then let him loose. I hope he stays relaxed, and I hope he gets into the game early. If he doesn't, Kittner's going to eat us alive. How about Krenzel? Krenzel's another athletic quarterback. He's, he's not quite as strong as McMullen, but he does understand this offense, and he has a lot of poise. So he's one of those guys that uh, you, you like to have him in the game. He's a leader, but none of these guys have really showed it. They haven't had a lot of reps, and we've just basically got to go with who we know, Jonathan Wells and, and the offensive line. All right, well, the saga for Steve Belisari will continue on after this. He is suspended indefinitely, so we don't know if he'll have a chance to come back or not. Uh, for a quarterback, I mean, to be in that situation, it's as tough as it gets. Well, I'll be honest with you, he let a lot of people down, and uh, I think he let himself down. He knows it. Uh, he made a big mistake, and uh, these guys got to pick it up. And uh, there's two games left. The season's not over, and I'm not giving it up. I hope they're not. All right, Jim, we'll talk to you on Sunday night as we wrap up this Illinois game and we look ahead to Michigan down the road. Send it back to you guys in the studio. Record crowd in Ohio Stadium, a loud and raucous crowd for the final one of the year. It really was a great crowd, and they got behind us, and when there were big third down plays and so forth, they were really behind that defense, and it was great to see. One of the best crowds, I thought, in a couple of years. And to rally around a couple of uh, young quarterbacks uh, who would be thrown right into the fire here, any decision on starting one over the other? How did that come about? Well, Scott had been working more with the second group, but Craig had been side by side, and we just thought going into the game we'd play them both and start with Scott.
All right, we're going to start them up. The highlights here as the Bucks get ready to take the field. And ground game, I imagine, would be important to take some of the pressure off of the young guys. Well, we really felt that we needed to, uh, to establish the good ground game. And Jonathan, I think, has been playing real solid this year. And uh, we started the game uh, throwing a deep one. And really, Chris Gamble had them. Uh, we got them matched up on their strong safety. We underthrew a little bit. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's tough to win when you uh, allow punts to be blocked. And, uh, boy, that was, uh, that was a tough one. Andy Groom punt blocked in a quick 7-0 lead before the defense even had a chance to get on the field. Still, defense hasn't played yet. And there's Jonathan Wells, as you mentioned, ripping off a long run, 59 yards. I'll tell you what, Jonathan uh, is having a career best year, which is what we ask of our seniors, and I'm awfully proud of him. Set up his blockers well on that as well. Giving the fans something to cheer about. Down into Illinois territory deep. Then, touchdown complete pass to Chris Vance. Good looking play there. The we were working against man coverage, and they crossed, and, and Scott McMullen did a good job finding them. 7-7 is the tie here early in the horseshoe. Good ball game. Mike Collins. Good looking sack there, and, and uh, it was good to see him get in there. And he missed most of last uh, ball game. It was good to see him get that sack. Looking good, feeling good there. This time, a little bit more trouble in the punt game. Yeah, we had a little bit of a high snap, and Andy Groom's a good athlete back there, and he stepped up and uh, gave us great field position. Very good high school running back in high school, and out he goes, uh, picking up the first down there. 27 yards on the pickup in the Buckeye drive. Stays alive for Mike Nugent. Moved us in, and uh, Mike Nugent put it through on the field goal, and, and uh, here we got 10 on the board. 23-yard field goal. Bucks go up 10-7 at that point. Kurt Kittner under pressure again, Tim Anderson. Good-looking play by Tim in there. Good pressure. 10-yard loss on the play. Kittner again. This time he hands to... Rocky Harvey, and the ball's on the ground. Great pressure by Joe Cooper on the blitz there, and Michael Doss comes up with the fumble recovery. Absolutely. Bucks take over possession there with a 10-3 lead. Back on defense, though. It's Kittner on offense. Back to pass again. Play action fake. Throws this one up. Kittner's been known to put a couple into the defensive secondary, and Donnie Nicky makes him pay. Well, Donnie was right at home with the deep middle safety, right where he was supposed to be, like he very, very often is, and he came up with a big play. Gives that Buckeye offense back possession of the football again in good field position. Jonathan Wells again. Good looking blocking up front by the offensive line. And uh, Jonathan makes big yards. 19 yards on the pickup there, but that drive ended stalled without a field goal made. Try was no good, and then it's back on offense again. That was a good looking play by Scott McMullen. He got us out. They had rolled a punt down to about the four, and he got us out. We ended up punting them deep into their territory, but I think this was a key drive for them. Uh, as they went into uh, uh, score down here a little bit later at the end of the second quarter. Kittner, a veteran there, uh, a long second and 10 completion, 24 yards on the pickup in the very next play. Now, well, great looking catch by their receiver. You have to give them credit. And unfortunately, we did a poor job with the football on offense and ended up uh, punting it away. And, and uh, there they got two quick scores on the board. Those were the two plays back to back there as Illinois takes a 21 to 10 lead. Jonathan Wells back on the ground again. Well, again, uh, we're out near midfield and we're going there and trying to come up with something near the end of the half. And this would have been a key point if we could have got that momentum shifted, knowing that they were going to have the ball when they started to the have. There's Michael Jenkins hooking up with Craig Krenzel. Good pass protection. Uh, but we ended up uh, missing a field goal uh, there at the end of the half and, and uh, came up uh, you know, with nothing. What do you do with a, a quarterback? The experience of Kurt Kittner was the object to try to maybe disguise some coverages and get into things late, try to keep off balance a little bit? And he's not a real movement guy either, so right. putting pressure. I thought our guys did a good job throughout that first half putting pressure. Uh, the one or two times we didn't have pressure on him in that second quarter, he delivered strikes, and their receivers made good plays. But, you know, that's why they're 8-1. and one. Uh, They're an outstanding football team, and, and Kittner uh, is a big part of it. 21-10, to 10, uh, the largest deficit during any game for the Buckeyes this season. Uh, the intensity would have to stay up with mood of the team at that point? Well, you know, our guys knew that we could run the football, we could pass it, we could play defense against them, and that we needed to play best, better special teams. Uh, so I, I felt good about the way our guys took the field to start the second half. A message early in the game, you take that deep shot, throw the deep ball, and you did it a couple times during the first half. Well, we really felt uh, that they were going to play a lot of people up to try to stop our run. They would have to in order to stop it, and they were going to leave us man-to-man. -man. And we really have a lot of confidence in our wide receivers. That first play of the game, Chris Gamble got matched up on their strong safety and really ran by him. We were just a little bit underthrown, uh, but uh, 
you know, we've got to be able to throw deep if we're going to get people off of our run game. All right, 21 to 10 at the 30-minute break. We're back with second-half highlights on Buckeye Football Weekly. For the most part, uh, in key situations, passing the ball, unless Illinois knew you were absolutely in a passing down, the offensive line, giving quarterbacks time and opening holes. Best of both there. You know, I really thought that they did a good job pass protecting until maybe the last minute or two when, you know, everyone in the stadium knew we had to throw every down. Uh, I was pleased with they, the way they have improved throughout the course of the season in pass protection. Coming back, uh, not something this team has done uh, with great success, but you get a chance to do it once again from your largest deficit says a lot about the character of this team. Yeah, there's no question our guys wanted to play this game. They wanted to do the best they could for those seniors, and they were not going to stop at the end of just one half of football. Well, and the guys that would lead them, of course, were the seniors, and we mentioned it off the top of the show. The guys on the field, though, special day for them. you got to be happy for them. You, each day that this, each year this comes around, you want these guys to have their career best, like you said, and a lot of them are. Well, there's no doubt about it. They've been a great group of kids to work with. I'm awfully proud of them, and, and uh, that's why everyone wanted to play so hard the second half. As we open it up, it's Marco Cooper and C. Grant laying the wood on the running back, Davis. Here we are as we get the ball back. Uh, you see, again, Jonathan Wells keeps his shoulder square to the sideline, which we've been talking about constantly, and finds that hole, and here we are out across midfield. Doing it on the ground and through the air as Krenzel, back to pass, he'll find Chris Vance. Again, we had a little crossing route against uh, man coverage. Chris did a good job finding a hole in there and got us a first down. It's a key third down play. 19 yards on the pickup. And another 14 complete to Michael Jenkins. Good step up there by Craig Krenzel, and he was able to find Michael on a comeback route. Good Next pass play. protection as well. If Jenkins is rewarded here, Krenzel steps up and finds him in the end zone. Well, that was a good looking play. We had kind of changed who we sent to the post and who we ran on the square end, and Craig did a great job finding him. Third and 16 from the 17 yards. That's good for a 17 yard touchdown. Simon Frazier, the freshman, having a good day. That was a good job getting to the quarterback. and. Got us uh, the football back, and here we are by midfield. Craig finds uh, Michael Jenkins, who had been running some in routes, and he took him on a little fade route, and, and uh, it was a good job, big pickup. Nice touch on that football, and again, finding the receiver underneath on the curl. This time he, he brought him in, gave him a little out uh, look, and ran the slant, and then here you see Jonathan getting through in our jumbo formation with, uh, with an extra lineman in there. And, and that was a great drive there. And you take the lead, 22-21, at a huge point in the ballgame. Well, no doubt about it, and, and our defense has been playing well there. You see Michael Doss doing a great job as he takes down their back with good pressure by Darian Scott. Here they ran the draw play, and there's Simon Frazier, uh, Mike Collins, Matt Wilhelm on the job. Whole defense getting it together here, but on the doorstep and in for the touchdown, and the lead go the Illini. Two-point conversion is snuffed out by Doss. Good job there by, uh, actually, Derek, Derek Ross. Ross yep. yep. And he made the uh, interception. And, and uh, here we are with the punt game. Hitting it down. And, and good coverage. Hit immediately. Stopped here. No game. Good job again by Derek Ross. And, and uh, we gave them a chance uh, from a long way from our goal line. That would start the Illini drive, which doesn't get very far first. Harvey on the stop. Kenny Peterson was in there, I believe, on that stop. And there you see Michael Collins doing a great job and Kenny Peterson right there. Uh, they punted it down. It was a close call there. Uh, mm -hmm. They gave them the uh, forward progress uh, on the one. And unfortunately, Craig Krenzel, uh, you know, just didn't, didn't feel that defender out there. And, and uh, it was a tough situation. Uh, here he does a good job stepping up. Uh, but I was awfully proud of both Scott and Craig with limited work throughout the course of the week yep. and really the season. I thought they stepped up and, and did the best that they could possibly do for the Buckeyes. Showed some promise there. 12 yards complete to Jenkins here, trying to move, make something happen. Well, you know, everyone in the stadium knows it's a pass, and, and we're doing a pretty good job trying to get some open areas. But again, uh, you know, we threw, a, threw one that uh, was a little bit ill-advised there, and uh, Coach Turner mentioned right there that what he wanted us to do was go and win next weekend so that they're the outright Big Ten champs. That's what they need is some help in order to do that as they move to 9-1, and one, a 34-22 win. Uh, at 22-21, uh, wonderful to, to go out and get two straight scores on two straight possessions and take a lead in that situation with what you're working with. Well, you know, there was no doubt that we were proud of what we did there. And, and uh, you know, we just we didn't finish the job. And uh, in a league like this against teams like we're playing, um, you know, we've got to play four quarters and make no mistakes, whether it's a first quarter punt mistake or a third quarter defensive mistake or a fourth quarter offensive mistake. Uh, you're not going to get by in the Big Ten 
uh, in these tight ball games. 95-yard drive engineered by Craig Krenzel uh, breathed some life into this team and uh, gave it some hope down there towards the end. Well, no doubt about it. I think all of our guys had a lot of confidence in Craig and Scott when they were in the huddle. They knew that they were going to do the best they could possibly do for them, and, and uh, I don't think there's anyone that went home uh, discouraged that uh, those young quarterbacks didn't come and try to do their best. All right, one guy who certainly did his best, Jonathan Wells. We'll have a visit with him coming up next on Buckeye.